Hey guys, this is your boy TNT Barbecue, and today we're doing a collaboration with my boy Joe, Smoking Joe Pitts. It's iCard, a playlist will be above the description. So, look at these beautiful briskets we got. There you go, my boy Smoking Joe logo. And there go the star of the show right there, my boy Smoking Joe Pitts Barbecue. So let's get to talking about these two beautiful briskets. First brisket is a USDA choice brisket. It's very marbled. And you can see right here, I'm just gonna start getting this out of the package. You see where I'm cutting the package open. Yeah, guys, so here's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need some paper towels. You're gonna need uh, a sharp knife. You're gonna need two sharp knives. And basically, yeah. And make sure when you take this out, you don't wash your meat because you have to contaminate your whole kitchen. And that's what the professionals say health inspectors and i'm gonna use a towel to just to pat off my meat get all the blood off of my meat and look at those gouges man oh i can't believe this i was pretty disappointed yeah but guess what the show must go on guys so i'm just gonna go ahead and wipe down get all the bl excess blood off of my meat which was not a lot you know but for is having a bunch of gouges inside of the flat of the brisket in a thin brisket flat this was a okay brisket the marbling was pretty decent so we got to work with what we got guys okay so right now i'm gonna start off by just trimming the edges you want to make sure you get all the edges guys okay and remember while we trimming this our goal is to make this aerodynamic for what so that the smoke can Gracefully grow over the brisket and uh, no sharp corners due to the fact of slicing. You want to make sure you get this brisket aerodynamic and you want to get anything off that will burn. You see that fat piece right there? That's not going to render. So my goal is just to get the knife and cut away from you and just get that all taken off, okay? Yeah, that's not going to render. So I mean, try your best to get all the little pieces that gonna burn and just make your brisket look ugly <laughs> yep so um like i say our key thing is to make this brisket aerodynamic and take away that uh edges because those edges have that uh this color in so we want to make sure we start with uh a great products in with a great product so that means we got to make sure we trim all that thin stuff off and you see right here i'm rounding my brisket off why do we do that? Because we want it to cook even. We want to make sure that we have an even cook. And you want to make sure that that don't burn. See that flat? That, that going to burn if I don't take that part off. All that's going to burn and crumble once you go to slicing. I guarantee it. So um, And it's going to be drier. So you want to just go ahead and remove that, man. Because I'd rather make sausages than to have ruins. So right here you can see I'm... I got my carving knife out and I'm, I'm going deep into the flat trying to fix that uh, gouges that the butcher that packaged this brisket left. So I, so sometimes you got to do what you got to do and that's what I'm doing. By doing that, I'm also removing all that silver skin and cleaning this brisket up. And you can see guys, uh, this carving knife is good for that job. And he said, why are you going so deep? Well, you got to get rid of those gouges. So it is what it is. Normally, I wouldn't go that deep. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And it's working. So, yep. Yeah. So you, if you see my f flat, it's going to curl up on me. Probably because of uh, um, how deep I had to go into my flat. So, but other than that, though, I'm pretty happy with the brisket for us. Like I say, the marbling. And I'm just going to continue to trim and get those edges um, curved aerodynamic. That's the key goal, guys. Get that brisket aerodynamic so it can cook better, it look better, and it'll slice better. And all your pieces will, um, uh, I think, keep its shape if you just follow these simple uh, instructions and, and like i say you got to work at it it's if it was fun if it was easy everybody be trying to cook brisket but it's not easy <laughs> so um 
we just make it look easy sometimes. <laughs> but yep, man, uh, I'm glad I got this brisket so I can show y'all guys that uh, sometimes you just got to work with what you got, and that's what we're doing here. So I'm just continue using my knife and make sure I'm gonna save that trim, and yeah, there gonna be some sausages or ground burgers. But other than that, I'm just going ahead and trying to clean up as I go. But uh, I'm filling around here, making sure that uh, the fat is not too thick. I'm not finding any hard fat because that soft fat will render. But you want to also continue working on getting that point rounded off because, like I said, you don't want those uh, sharp edges on a brisket. I keep saying that. Due to the fact that uh, people say, oh, you're over trimming your brisket. Well, if you ever try this method, you will see the outcome will be a lot better. And that's just my opinion. And um, I've been following a lot of great cookers that d does this method. And to me, it always it helped me out. So I'm just passing on the knowledge. And let your hand and your eyes do the work. You know, as you can see, uh, you keep going around with that knife and you, you, you'll you see it start to form. And I want to get down to a quarter or eighth of an inch of fat. So I'm just going to continue. That's the rule of thumb. I'm just going to continue uh, to use my carbon knife to get the fat down off of the flat so it can render... And I have a nice uh, tasting brisket, nice, juicy, moist brisket. But if you leave a lot of that fat on, that fat is just, it's not a great feel in your mouth, not in my mouth, you know. So, uh, yeah, and you can see right there where the point meets the flat, you got to, you got to kind of hold it at an angle. And you just want to keep gouging into that until you reach the desire this thickness of your fat cap and that can be pretty difficult but you want to make sure you do that because if not where that point meets that f uh flat or where the flat meets the point you will have a big thick huge pocket of fat and that's very undesirable so your family will thank you <laughs> people will thank you you know so i think it's coming together it's starting to look a lot better and um like I say again, it takes work and uh, can't be satisfied with just doing a simple trim. Um, even though this is not for a customer, this is for a tea. And and I want us for a friend I'm going to bless them with. You want to make sure you get that aerodynamic. Oh, and the season I'm using is this Florida Cell. Um... It's Florida Cell. It's, it's salt that I got from uh, Joe over at Smoking Joe Pitts Barbecue. Uh, he was using it on a brisket cook. And he told me he got it from Amazon. I just Amazon and got it. And that's what I'm going to be using. It's my base salt. Because the rolls I'm using today, they have great flavor. But uh, I want to add a little salt because that's a big piece of meat. And I'm going to use my Uncle Steve. Uh, shake and that's that uh, competition cow powder. I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna use some W sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and I'm gonna use some garlic. So we got some Uncle Steve shake, we got some W sauce for a binder, right here. and we and got I'm some garlic, green lady garlic. Sauce. So I'm going okay. with the W sauce. You just see, guys, uh, it's not simple. Just get the W sauce. Thank We're gonna you. start with the meat side yeah, first, meat, and plum, just flavor. and then I'm gonna. Get that Florida sale, and I'm using a different container because I don't want to contaminate my whole um, box of Florida sale. That thing was like eleven dollars for that little box, so you can see I got like a little salsa bowl. I got the salt in, and that's what I'm be using. And this is just uh, to get a nice little imami flavor. I know people use that word, but that's what this salt creates. It creates imami um, imami flavors. I want to make sure I get that fat cap too. So, yeah, I'm going to salt that down pretty good. And this salt, it's hard to explain. You have to go to Amazon and get it yourself. You will be happy. <laughs> but, 
But yeah, so that just be my little base salt layer, and I'm not going as heavy as I normally would go if I was just using salt and pepper. This is just to add another layer of flavor, guys. Yep, another layer of flavor. That's all this is. And remember, get your edges and things of that nature. And everything is an ingredient. Always remember that. So smoke is an ingredient. The uh, rub you use is an ingredient. You don't want nothing to overpower anything. So I know Uncle Steve's shake is uh, big on pepper. So it's really going to pair good with this um, garlic and salt. Uncle Steve's shake just going to bring everything together. And that's me going on pretty heavy with the garlic. Oh, I love garlic, guys. Hey, if you love garlic, I love garlic. Put a pile on, baby. <laughs> and now I'm finna go on with my Uncle Steve Shake competition cow powder, baby. Yeah, hey. And I'm gonna have a down below in the uh, about section. That's where I'm gonna have his link at where you can go purchase this shake. And you will be rewarded if you try some of this competition uh, cow cover. I'm telling you what, it is amazing. Great flavor, great texture. You will love this season. Yep. And remember, guys, pat, don't rub. Pat, don't rub. So that's what we're doing. We're patting our meat, and we're not rubbing it. So, yep. And uh, I tell you what, guys, it's that simple. And I'm just going to do the other side the same way. And I'm just going to continue with the seasoning. So this one, I'm going to start off with the this salt. Just add some of this, the Florida uh, sells uh, salt. This, this so salt right here? Salt both sides. And we're gonna, uh, Get that salt padded in. And like I said, it's a great liberal. base flavor for this brisket. And, man, I had some of this on steak the other night. On it it makes a difference, man. I'm telling you what. I'm hooked on this expensive salt. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> so, yeah. And remember, guys, go over and check Joe's video out. I will have that. Uh, also, um, it'll be a collaboration. So, I'll make sure I try to put that on a playlist so you can go check Joe's video out. But, man, sure flat, I'm really excited about this brisket. Now, I'm going over with the Cabin of Greek season. And... If you've been a fan of me for whatever, I, this Cabin of Greek season been a favorite season of mine for a long time. This right here is thebomb.com. I'll tell you what, guys. Cabiners, you can't go wrong with Cabiners Greek season. Man, it is great on beef. But, yeah, that's what I'm going on right there. Just a little uh, salt and some Cabiners, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Just keep this one. Pretty simple, guys. Um, I'm trying to get the bark build up and get everything the way we gonna put it out there on old rusty. Yeah, we'll be using old rusty, man. We're gonna be cooking these low and slow, 225 degrees, 250. If I didn't tell you guys, the temperature today is around eight to ten degrees. Yeah. It's a cold one today, and we still got a lot of snow on the ground. It is cold. So there go the man itself, TNT, with old Rusty, the, the original Dundella. So, yep, I'm going to just open all the doors due to the fact the more airflow you can get to get your fire started, the better your fire will get uh, started. So I'm opening all the doors. I'm going to start with some Kingsford charcoal blue bag so that's what we're gonna use today yeah man i tell you what i am so excited and man it is cold out there guys y'all see all that white stuff on the ground <laughs> i'm using my fire starter uh today my leaf blower my torch whatever to get my charcoal started and uh yeah anything helps in this cold climate so we got old rusty coming up the temp like I said, I kind of want to overshoot for a little bit, around 250 degrees. And I put my brisket on. Uh, that's the that's the uh, brisket that we trimmed up on camera. And you see, I always like to shake my meat up the way I want it to cook. I'm going to move it over 
It's because I don't want over. I don't want to know no hot spots. I can't, like I say, we want to go low and slow. This is an old school brisket. Uh, we're gonna use the Texas Crutch on both of these briskets, and uh, yeah, and I'm gonna put this brisket in right here. This is the Cavernous right, Greek so season. I got both brisket on. And uh, yep. So both um, briskets are on the smoker. I kind of wash them off a little, little bit with my hands. So I'm just gonna brisket. go back over it. Just make sure just a I got bit to make sure that what I smeared, I can put the season back on it. So uh, one thing about I like about Uncle Steve's shake that hey man, once that stuff on, it's on. Man, that's a great season. I'm pretty impressed with Uncle Steve's shake. Hey man, I, 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 it comes two thumbs up for me. So yep, and what I want, I want my brisket, and I want my smoker to come up the temperature together. So that gets the best smoke flavor, and to me, I like that. So we're gonna go ahead and shut it down. And remember, we want our brisket and our smoker to come up the temperature together, cause that, uh, that to me, that helps out with the bark, that helps out with the smoke ring, helps out with the flavor. And, and uh, these little tricks is just things I have learned throughout cooking years and years of barbecue. So I'm always learning and I'm always passing along what I have learned. So, yep, that's what we're looking like. And today we're using some oak and cherry. So we use a mixture, oak and cherry. Y'all know I like that oak and that cherry is great color. And the oak gives me some real hot temperatures and plus some good uh, flavor. Uh, I think Joe's using post oak. So uh, yeah, I'm using red oak. So that's what we're doing. So like I say, guys, I'm gonna continue out here in the cold for y'all guys. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all should have seen how much shoveling I had to do to get this smoker out of this, uh, get the smoker ready. Hey guys, it's been about three, four hours and I'm out here in the cold. <laughs> yeah, it is cold, man. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna spritz this. I'm gonna use just strictly water cause I don't want nothing to interfere with these rubs and with and what I got going on. Like I say, this time of year, I love to approve. So this is how I'm proving. I'm trying different rubs, I'm trying different season. And y'all can see that bark, how that bark setting up. But I got some ends that's getting a little dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and like I say, spritz it with just water. That's all I'm using, just plain old H2O. Water. And man, I, can I tell you again, it is freezing. The temperature is dropping. But that's okay, guys. I'm doing this for y'all. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what we do. TNT barbecue, baby. So, yep, we're going to just let, let the old rust do what it do. And while I'm out here, I think I'm going to add uh, two or three more splits. Normally, I just add one. But since the temperature is so cold, uh, I think I add two or three splits. To I know I will add two or three splits to the fire because you want to keep the temperature around 225. But I was running around two, 225, sometimes 265. But I prefer to run a little hot than too low because we really want the fat to render on those briskets. So, yep. You can see me dropping them in that reverse flow. And if you didn't know, old Rusty is a reverse flow smoker. And man, this thing cook good. It really does. So, yep, we're going to just go for the long haul. And now we're going, I would say, look at it, man. Bark is really looking nice on here, man. I, I, I'm pretty impressed. That's the one we used. The, um, that's, the, that's the Cavern of Greek season one right there. So, that's the one that I trimmed off camera and yep so we just put it in uh three layers of luma foil with a, with a stick of butter and we just gonna wrap it up in three layers of luma foil and the reason why i lose so much luma foil is because i don't want to make a mess all over my smoker <laughs> yep and uh so it's been on so i think uh, internal temperature when i wrap this it was around 162 degrees and uh the smaller brisket which is the one that i trimmed on camera 
it was actually a little lower. It was like 155. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> uh, you know, that's just how briskets do sometimes. So that's at 155 right there, but the bark looks amazing. It, it it got some real crispy spark, but you can see up top I got some light spots. That's where the puddling happened, but hey, you can't fix that all the time. So I'm just gonna wrap that in aluminum foil. And in this technique, it's like I would do butcher's paper, but like I say, sometimes I wrap this way, but I try to make sure I have three layers of aluminum foil. And I wrap over and over again. And I use butter because uh, it melts down and it becomes a liquid. It helps with the tenderizing, but it doesn't leak out as much as um, if you use beef broth or some other form of liquid like that. So that's what I do. And I'm putting them on butter side down. So uh, basically, that hump is going up like a ramp. So that means I'm cooking meat side down, fat side up. So that's All right, guys. So I did a voiceover in the last uh, part of the video. I'm trying something new, guys. But, yeah. So this is the end of the video. And I'd like to reach out, guys, with a hello. It's the next day, guys. It was late last night when these bristles got finished. And I wanted to make sure I shot this video in the right frame of mind, okay? So I'm gonna bring y'all guys in close. We are gonna uh, carve the first one up. It's gonna be the one we did with Uncle Steve Shake uh, competition uh, cow powder. And this one is is the uh, Florida Cell sea salt along with Cavalry Street season. So let's go in and we're gonna see how these briskets turned out. Okay. Oh my goodness, look at that now. Is it jiggly? Oh, look at that jiggle. So, look at that jiggle, guys. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. Uh, that's real jiggle right there, I'm not trying. So let's go and go ahead and cut into this brisket and see what I'm working with, guys, okay? All right. So oh, yeah. Oh, it looks good. I got a little faint smoke ring. I don't know why. I didn't get a big one, but I got a faint smoke ring. So I just wish I knew why I didn't get a fusion on Rusty. But hey, that's okay. And I'm gonna keep slicing. I'm gonna try to keep the bark on. Pencil thickness, guys. Pencil thickness. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that's how it's looking right there, okay? And it's real tender. Look at that, though. It just pulls apart so easy. Look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start right here. And we're just going to go ahead and slice right here. Try to see this juiciness. Now that's not meat jello. Look at that juiciness, man. Y'all don't see that juiciness in that brisket? Man, that is so juicy. Oh my goodness. And you can see how the fat still uh kind of Gel together, look at that. That's the gelatin. That is the best brisket right there money can buy. Yum, a nice little smoke ring. Look at that, though, man. 
That's when you know it's cooked right. And your hungs like that. That's when you know it's cooked right. So yep. I'm loving that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside of the pan. And I'm just gonna cut this one out right here. This is the Cameron Greek season one. And this one has a lot more juices in it. Oh my goodness. This one has a lot more juices. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, way more juices. Juicy. So let me see. So, yeah. This one is not as pretty, but it has a lot more juices in the packet. So, yep, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this, cut this fat right here. Oh, this one got a better smoke ring too. So, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here. This one is cutting a little better. Okay. Right now. This one got more of a smoke ring. I mean, this one got a little more smoke ring right here, you see it? And it folds a little better. Yeah, it's juicy, but I don't know if it's juicy than what I just did. Look at that though, that's a nice little smoke ring. So I'm just gonna cut right here. So, yeah, look at that egg, we got some juice coming out of that one now. So, just go ahead and cut a couple slices from cut like right here. And I hope you can pick that up, man. That is that is a juice avalanche right there, buddy. Yeah, that's juicy. That's that that's that's nice and juicy um point to a brisket. I'm gonna cut one right here. Okay. I'm gonna cut. Uh, this is the cabiners right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get a piece of that out for the cabiners. Um, I mean, excuse me, not cabinets, but uh, Uncle Steve shake. All right, let's go out for a taste test. All right, guys, so I want to taste the cabinets, uh flat and the cabinets point. I want to taste Uncle Steve flat, Uncle Steve point. And I want to remind you, this is a collaboration with my boy Joe Smoking Joe Pitts, uh, man, go check him out, man. Comment, subscribe to his channel. Comment, subscribe to my channel. So I think I'm going to go ahead with my Uncle Steve Shake. Tender. Mm. Mm. Very moist. You get the black pepper. You get the um. It's like I don't know if it's cumin or what, but it's some it's some real good flavors in there. But you get the black pepper, you get the salt, you get the smoke. Hey, Uncle Steve, got you a great great rub here. So I'm gonna try a little piece of the uh, fatty. And man, I think I hit a home run when it comes to this. It's fat brisket because this thing is 
It's just so sticky and. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can't top that. Smoky, fatty, moist, juicy, melt in your mouth. That's a bad brisket right there. That's a bad man. So I want to taste this cavities. First, I'm gonna taste the flat. And the flat is amazing when it comes to this cavern one and the smoke ring is a little more pronounced but it's tender mm. so the cabiners I know what I'm getting but Uncle Steve got more of a uh, peppery note. Cavern's got that garlic punch to it. Man, I think Uncle Steve got it with this. Now, the texture of this brisket is a lot better, but Uncle Steve's shake is right on. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I'm going to try some of the fatty. And the texture of this, this, this fatty part of brisket is spot on, man. Let me try this. Hot dog! <laughs> Boy. <laughs> So guys, this is your boy TNT Barbecue. What Southern is supposed to taste. I'm gonna get it all vacuum sealed up. Put it in a deep freezer. And uh, probably share some of this with some friends and family. I wanna say God bless you. And God bless America. And remember, pray for the people with coronavirus. Keep smiling and keep praying. Love you. Bye-bye.